Tribu subsidy removal announcement. And Kanu State Governor elect gets certificate of return and promises infrastructure revival. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anakom. In a knee-jerk reaction to the confirmation of fuel subsidies removal by President Bola Ahmed Tunubu's administration, marketers and operators have increased petrol pump price to 500 naira per litre. In his inaugural speech on Monday, the president said, since the immediate past, President Muhammad Buhari did not budget for fuel subsidies in the second half of the year, the payment is gone for good. In Lagos, the sharp increase in fuel pump price is almost 100% as Lagosians purchase the product for 500 naira per litre from 180 naira per litre. These prices change have happened less than six months or six hours, I beg your pardon, after Tinubu's announcement during his inaugural speech at the Eagle Square in Abuja. guess our new president you know this was a pronouncement and it's i think it's unfair on all of our you know major marketers who want to begin you know to seize you know um, um opportunity in areas where it's not i mean we all need to be sincere in this country if we really well joining us to discuss this is nick agule he is a public affairs analyst nick it's so good to have you join us good evening much and good evening to our viewers. Great. Um, there's dissenting views on this particular issue. Since Tuesday morning, there's been chaos. Um, there's the he said, she said situation. I mean, a lot of people are blaming the president for mentioning, even mentioning it in, it, uh, in, in his speech on Monday. And there are those who are also saying, look, it's okay that this is being done right now instead of postponing doomsday. But what are your thoughts on how this has been, you know, this has played out? I thank you very much for that question. Uh, it's a very important question because fuel subsidy is the main topic that is uh, trending in Nigeria now because every one of us uh, have one thing or the other to do with petrol. Uh, even if you don't use petrol directly, as in you don't have any machine, uh, whether a car or a bike or anything or a generator that uses petrol, uh, you will still be affected if the cost of uh, food, for instance, in the market is hiked as a result of the increase in transportation. Uh, so you also be affected if you have to go to work with public transportation so petrol is a commodity that affects all of us in Nigeria, whoever that you are. So this trending topic is actually uh, needed uh, because uh, the president uh, on his, uh, in his inauguration speech uh, made a categorical statement that fuel subsidy is gone. I believe those were his exact words. Now, there are two aspects to this speech. <laughs> the first thing is that we all have to agree that fuel subsidy needs to go. Because, uh, I mean, when we say fuel, it's not actually fuel. We should be very specific. Petrol. Because fuel is a compound word that includes petrol, diesel, kerosene, aviation fuel, and all of that. So it's not even fuel subsidy. Because there are no subsidies on all the other products, all the other fuel products. Uh, there is only subsidy on petrol, which is the premium uh, motor spirit. So to be specific, uh, petrol subsidies on petrol need to go. That is incontestable because not only has that subsidy scheme not delivered to Nigerians what uh, the value that is, is required, it has been used by people to loot the commonwealth of this country. And the fact that petrol is the only subsidy that the federal government decides, I mean, is the only commodity 
that the federal government decides that they will pay subsidy on is also questionable because we go to the market to buy food. And, and in the same market, you can buy a, a tuber of yam at different prices, depending on your bargaining power, depending on the trade that you are dealing with. That's what we call market forces. You know, so even the, the, the cost of the, the vehicles that the federal government is paying subsidy on petrol for, the cost of the vehicles is totally deregulated. People bring in a vehicles and sell it at, at a price that gives them a profit. Even if you have a vehicle and you have petrol in the vehicle, the, pet, uh, the petrol alone is not going to move that vehicle. The vehicle needs other things like engine oil. And the, and the price of engine oil is totally deregulated. People are buying engine oil uh, in, 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 in bargains between seller and buyer. So it's not very clear why the federal government of all the commodities in Nigeria, including pharmaceuticals, which are so needed to keep us alive, that the federal government doesn't bother about the price of those commodities. The federal government doesn't even bother about the price of diesel. And diesel is the fuel that is used in the manufacturing. The federal government does not bother about the price of kerosene, which is used by the poor. You know, so is the question is why was the federal government so concerned with one single commodity, petrol, and we have been spending trillions of naira on this commodity. So that aspect is that the subsidy needed to go. But then there's a second aspect. The second aspect is that how, how, for me, the president elect needed to take office and then call all the players involved in this subsidy scheme okay. together and understand this subsidy thing properly because he was outside the corridors of power. He didn't have the data. He didn't know anything that, that was happening as far as this uh, scheme was concerned. So he needed to inv invite all the parties mm -hmm. into a room so that they can break down the data for him. It is when he sees the data that he's not able to make decisions, smart decisions, where um, you know he, he will be able to now take those steps that will ensure that it's a win-win both for the government and the people of Nigeria. So I would have expected him to have exercised better wisdom in his speech, in his inaugural speech to say, we are going to address the matter of fuel subsidy. And Nigerians should look forward to a statement from my government on what is going to happen to fuel subsidy. I'm, now, I'm curious, Nick, why would, why would the, gov the president just mentioning that fuel subsidy is gone begin to cause the kind of chaos that we've seen between Monday and today? Nothing has been put out. In a statement or a joint statement was not put out by the NNPC in collaboration with marketers. Nothing. So, I mean, a president can mention this. It doesn't mean that we should have this kind of a rippling effect. Or was it just that these people were already waiting for an opportunity um, to take advantage of Nigerians, especially when we're facing a downturn in the economy? Yeah, so this, the president made the, 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 the inaugural speech on Monday, the 29th of May. On that Monday, there was no problem at the petrol stations. On, on a Tuesday, there was no problem at the petrol stations. Oh, there was. That's when it began. Uh, okay. I, I think it was Tuesday when it started. Okay, sorry. Yes. So let me take that back. So President makes the speech on Monday, no problem. On Tuesday, the NNPC, who is the sole importer and supplier of petrol in Nigeria, and that is another issue I'm going to address, mm -hmm. decides on its own to increase the price of petrol that is given to the petrol stations to 500 plus. The NNPC actually published uh, a list, which I have seen, where they have different price regimes, but not less than 500, within 500 and something uh, around the country. And that is what has resulted into this uh, price hike that we are seeing. It is the NNPC that caused this. And I don't understand why the NNPC decided to do this. The reason is this. The Buhari government told us 
and we have actually seen that there is provision for fuel subsidy up to the end of June. And the NNPC, even in the run-up to the inauguration, told us that they had several weeks of petrol in stock to take care of demand. The petrol that was in stock already had subsidy paid on it. So why would the NNPC then wake up one day and decide to hack the price of petrol on stock for which Nigeria's money has already been used to pay for subsidy? These are the questions that I expect the media to cross-examine the NNPC group managing director as to his actions. Products were brought in, subsidy was paid, these things were in the tanks. And then you wake up one day and increase the price of petrol upon which we have already paid subsidy? How does that work? So if the NNPC in increase the price of petrol from 1st of July, I will understand. Because then now we know that the, 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 the budget that was provided for, for subsidy up to 30th of June, was used to provide the subsidy. So that is one side. The other side is that, why is it that is only the NNPC that is importing and distributing petrol in Nigeria? Why? This is a question that we need to ask ourselves. Of all the commodities that we consume in Nigeria, I mean pharmaceuticals, it, pharmaceuticals to me are even more important than petrol to, to humanity. Because if you are sick and you don't take a drug, you will die. Whereas you wake up in the morning and you don't use petrol, you can still live. So something like pharmaceuticals, government has allowed local manufacturers, government has allowed people to import, and everybody is selling their pharmaceuticals at their prices that will give them a profit. Mm -hmm. Why is it that only NNPC is uh, importing petrol? If government totally deregulates this sector and says, Nikagule Petrol uh, Company Limited, if you like, you can import Anybody that wants, you can import petrol with the government will only be responsible for checking the quality of the petrol that you are bringing in. Mm. And when you bring that petrol in, sell that petrol at a price that will give you a profit. What will happen immediately is that those who already have the facilities to import petrol and bring it into the country, they will be the ones that will be doing the business and any humongous profits. But as people watch them make profit, there will be entry of more players into the sector. And as more and more players enter the sector, so the price of petrol will continue to fall because there will not be competition. Interesting. You know, this is what we are experiencing in telecoms, for instance. So that is one of the questions that I expected President Tinubu to sit these people in the room and ask. Great. Why is it that NMPC is the only one importing petrol? He needed also to ask them, what is the landing cost of this petrol that you are bringing in? He needed to ask them, what is the actual con con quantity that is being consumed? Show me evidence of the quantity of petrol that is being consumed. By asking these questions, President Tinubu would have seen the two aspects of the subsidy. There is one aspect of the subsidy that is legit because there is actually subsidy. If there was no subsidy, petrol would say more than 195. That is just the fact. Then there's another aspect of the subsidy that is fraud. That one is looting. President Tinubu just needed to do a little bit of homework mm. to decipher the two so that he can see the legit subsidy and then he can see the looting. And then he will cut away the looting. Immediately he cuts away the looting, the subsidy bill, I can uh, imagine in my head that the subsidy bill will come down by about 50 to 60%. Great. By simply cutting away the looting. And then the next thing uh, President uh, Tinubu needed to do was to ask the question, why are Nigeria's four refineries not working? <laughs> uh, th that's, the, that's the next question I wanted to ask. But before we go to that, you talked about Mela Kiari. Mela Kiari um, has been talking to the media. Um, uh, he was on a morning show on a different station this morning, and he was speaking about the spike um, that uh, of prices and in fact he was quoted to say that the spike in prices would lead to a competition i wonder what competition that will be because as we speak just as you said the nmpc has that monopoly but he said um that the recent increase in fuel pump prices will lead to heightened market competition 
He also said the removal of fuel subsidies and the alignment of prices with market rates will attract more oil company, uh, companies to invest in Nigeria's oil market uh, and they will also benefit from the economy, uh, or rather the economy will benefit from it. And then lastly, he talked about the fact that the market will regulate itself um, it will reduce inefficiencies and fuel smuggling while it will make industry data more credible. But how can all of these things happen if we cannot even attest to how much con uh, fuel consumption we do in a day? For so many years, the NNPC has been unable to tell us how much fuel that we consume as a country every single day. It's almost impossible. We're always um, speculating. Again, you've also talked about the issue of refineries. Many had said that, oh, maybe with the, um, the um, um, Dangote refinery, we're probably going to have a bit of competition. But there are also those who query um, if there will really be a competition of sorts when Dangote eventually decides that he's going to start producing. And then uh, also the other question I want to ask is, how soon will that be? Thank you very much. I, I wish uh, it was you who was interviewing uh, the CEO of uh, the NNPC so that you take him apart. You know, your, your inquisitive uh, uh, questions now, uh, I wish they were put to him so that he can explain it to us. How can you say there will be competition when you are the sole importer? You are a monopoly. You are the only one bringing in this product. So how can you the only person bringing in the product set a price of 537, for instance, and expect someone else to set a different price. You know, and, and to me, this is what uh, President Tinubu, it, it's, it's not even late. The fact that President Tinubu made that uh, uh, broadcast in his inaugural speech, I think he should, if he's watching me or uh, any of his advisors are watching me, I am still advising that President Tinubu should draw these people into a room. He should bring the NMPC into the room. He should bring Nigeria's downstream regulatory uh, authority into the room. He should bring the major marketers into the room. He should bring the labor unions who are already agitated into the room. And he should just bring civil society into the room. And they should bring the everyday consumer of petroleum products into the room so that he can ask these questions. Like you already said, there is a dark box in this subsidy scheme. We don't know the landing cost because it is the landing cost that will determine what subsidy is. If the NNPC tells us that we are landing petrol at 600 naira a liter, then government says sell at 195. We know what subsidy is because subsidy will be the difference between the landing cost and what government says we should sell. Again, we, we by by 2015, Nigeria was uh, said to be consuming 30 million liters of petrol. As we're speaking today, they're talking about 60 million. Or they're even talking Seven, about, uh, million, there was actually. a figure of about 70 something million liters that was put out there. And yeah. you ask yourself the question, has the number of cars doubled on Nigerian roads? The, the, the jump in the quantum of petrol that we are consuming, is it consistent with other nations? Is that why, is that how other nations' petrol consumption also jumped? So you can clearly see that there's racketeering with these numbers, these two key metrics that are needed to compute subsidy. There's a criteria with them. Mm -hmm. That is the landing cost, the uh, the quantity consumed. And what President uh, Tinubu just needs to do in the interim is to say, NMPC, I know you are an oil company. Please step aside. I want every other person who can bring petrol into Nigeria to go and bring their petrol. Downstream authority have a very strong testing regime at the port so that when the petrol comes, you must test it and ensure that it's fit for consumption. Everybody should bring their petrol in and sell it at a price that will make them a profit. In the UK, where I live, you can have two petrol stations. I used to work for an international oil company. We had two petrol stations on the A4. Those who know London know that the A4 is the road that leaves London to the Heathrow Airport. They were opposite each other. And the prices of petrol and other products in the two stations were different, always different. Because it, it depends on the dynamics of the market. Hmm. You know, so let us have a situation where if the NNPC like, let them be selling their petrol at 537. If somebody succeeds in bringing in their petrol and sell it at 450, let them be carrying the market. So that another person 
who brings in and is able to sell at 300, let them be carrying the market. Mm. Before you know what's happening, if the true competition will lead us consuming, I mean, paying the right prices for these products, and the racketeering will just disappear. But that should have just been an interim measure. Yeah. The real question is, Nigeria has got four refineries. Four refineries with combined capacity of 450,000 barrels of crude oil to be refined daily. President Tinubu needs to ask the singular question. NMPC, why are these refineries not working? GMD, I'll be CEO as he calls himself now, changing nomenclature, not changing behavior. Uh, a CEO of uh, NMPC, if you don't get these refineries to work for me in six months, I am I am sacking you from your job. But but Nick, because but, you but, cannot sit but, on but, your. But Nick, these refineries, as we all know from from some of the research and visibility studies that have been carried out on these refineries, they have become moribund. They are no longer state of the art. They they're not as good as what is you know, used in today's refining. So, I mean, there's, there's monies, trillions and trillions have been thrown at, you know, um, turnaround maintenance. But how workable will these refineries be, being that, you know, refining has taken a new turn and these refineries are really old and, you know, from way back when? How, how can he accomplish that in six months? And how are we certain that even if a lot of more money is thrown in, uh, into, you know, making the refineries work, that they will be up to the task. So this is a, a situation that I cannot make a categorical statement about because I don't have the technical background to the refineries as we have them today. But if I can go by what the NMPC has consistently told us, the NMPC, you know all this why that these refineries have not worked. The NMPC still pays staff who are in those refineries. Yeah. And the NMPC tells us that they are paying those staff because the staff are taking care, the staff are taking care of the minimum maintenance activities that will, will make these refineries to, to still be viable. Mm -hmm. So if I take the NMPC by their words, the refineries should still be viable. And if uh, President uh, Tinubu, President Tinubu can commission a study, he can commission a forensic study of Nigeria's four refineries, not by the NMPC, not by the Minister of Petroleum, not by the downstream regulatory authority, but by independent experts, independent experts of repute, both Nigerians and experts from above, uh, from, from, from abroad, to study the four Nigerian refineries and see their viability. Okay. And if those refineries are viable, I will actually advise President Tinubu to hands off those refineries. Just hands, hands off because the NMPC hasn't been able to operate them in a matter of 20, 30 years. Mm. So President Tinubu then needs to put up those refineries uh, either for sale or for lease and operate. Okay. So that uh, operators in the downstream sector who are already into refining business can take those refineries and work with them. You okay. see, uh, you, you know, in 2007, in 2007, as the, as the Obasanjo regime was about to leave office, they sold those refineries. They sold those refineries. And, and, and the, 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 the buyers of those refineries must have bought them only after they had commissioned technical studies mm. and commercial studies or the viability of those refineries, yes, they will not have put their money there. But that sale was re reversed. I mean, the likes of Femi Atenola were some of the people who paid to get that refinery, but then that was reversed. But let's quickly, because we don't have time, let's move quickly to the situation of things on the ground. Um, in, let's look at the re crippling, let me not even say, the crippling effect of this subsidy removal and the way and manner in which it's been gone about. Um, let's quickly take a look at the reactions of Nigerians um, around town and, and how they're reacting to the situation of things. Within five minutes, all the petrol stations are closed. After all, they have stock in their, uh, in their uh, pit. They will have, unless they get new stuff, I don't expect anybody to increase fuel by even one couple. So I understand some people have started selling at the rate of 300, 400. How do you justify that? Yeah, for how many hours? Since 8 o'clock, I have not taken my, my breakfast. 
Even lunch, I've not taken lunch, and I've been years since. Nigeria, except that, uh, except that the case we have taken to the tribunal is decided as it should be. And then, as a matter of fact, the suffering has just begun. First subsidy as a, a matter is it, a policy matter of government. And it's not what you come to the open to talk about. But the incoming president had mentioned that. The implication is what you find on ground. So what was his expectation when he was making that statement? What did he think? So today, we are already queuing. So it explains what we are to see in the next four years, unless something drastically happened. Just a few minutes ago, I bought for here 502. Uh, yes, Mr. President may have announced that subsidy is gone. All right, Nick, so that's just a few people giving you, you know, their reaction to what's happening. Um, now, in the interim, how do Nigerians survive? Because salaries are not going to be increased. The cost of living is continuously going higher. Transportation is a total mess because people can't even afford it. Take-home pay will now only just be transport pay. In two minutes, where do we go from here? It's very sad when I watch uh, Nigerians lament about uh, petrol like this. Some saying they have been there for four, from since 4 a.m., some sleeping on the queue. It's like a farmer, one of the biggest uh, farmers of uh, yam in, uh, in the world. The children are perpetually hungry. You know, it's, it's a shame. And I believe that the uh, government should do something quickly about this. So where do we go from here? My advice to President Tinubu is, number one, sit all the experts and all the stakeholders that are needed in this uh, fuel subsidy in a room understand what it is. But the immediate step that needs to be done is totally deregulate this downstream sector. Make it open that from tomorrow, if anybody wants to import petrol and sell it at a price that will make them a profit, let them do so. And from tomorrow, President uh, Tinubu should begin to talk about the refineries. He should do something about the refineries. And my advice to him is that he should just simply sell those refineries. President Tinubu can sell each of the four refineries at one dollar. One dollar. And how do I mean? The people that buy the refinery at one dollar will now use the money they would have ordinarily built another refinery or refurbish another refinery to now refurbish these refineries so that they can start producing petrol for us. Mm. And I can tell you that if we refine locally, the petrol will be far cheaper than what the NNPC is forcing down our throats now. Because what the NNPC is forcing down our throats now is the cost of buying crude in Nigeria, the cost of shipping the crude to Singapore, the cost of refining the crude in Singapore, the cost of moving that uh, refined product from Singapore back to Nigeria with the insurance costs, with the handling costs, with the port charges, the with lot. the demo rate, and everything is inside that 537 naira that the NPC is forcing down our throats. If we are refining our products locally, we are not going to pay a dime in mm. all those costs I have mentioned. Well, so that is the solution that, the pres that President Tunibu needs to go to. Well, let's hope that he's listening and something will uh, obviously be done about it. But Nick Agule is a public affairs analyst. Always a pleasure to have you on the show, Nick. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank you, and Nigerians. Let's keep hope alive. All right. Tomorrow will be better. All right. Yes. Well, we'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll be discussing the promises made by the governor of Kanu State to the people and, of course, setting the agenda. It's still Plus Politics. We'll be right back. <laughs>